Your life circumstances are reflecting your dominant state of being. So if you want to change that reflection, what changes do you need to make? In this video, I'm going to be explaining exactly how you can do that. I'm going to be giving you three different things you can start to do now to make the shifts at the depth that's really needed. The good news is, is that ideal version of you that will experience those circumstances that you want to have exists right now. The only issue is that you cannot perceive of it. The more you understand the lenses that you're looking through, it can dramatically change what you see in your outside world. So you can start to draw two you that life that you really want to have and the one that you really deserve so let's get started your state of being are your thoughts and your feelings they send out an electromagnetic signature and you right now are getting a reflection of that now that reflection could be unconscious and what I want to show you in the rest of this video is how you can start taking awareness the light of awareness into those parts of you that are unconscious so you can bring consciousness to them and make a new choice first thing you've got to understand to help you right now is perceptions those those circumstances that you're looking for actually exist. However, your perceptual lenses are blocking out, so your senses are not able to see. And there's all sorts of science that backs up. We do not see with our eyes, we actually see with our brain. And that heavily has to do with what you've been through. Not only your early on environment, but everything you've been through since that experience. The more you become aware of it, the more you can shift how it affects your current life. We have between 20 to 50 50 million bits of information coming into our subconscious that it's processing per second. And everything else gets filtered out other than what we're looking for that aligns with the experiences, with the assumptions, with the beliefs that we have. So the big thing you really want to start understanding is labels and meaning you're putting on situations. Situations as they are actually neutral. We put a label, we put a meaning, good, bad. So you understanding when you do this can give you the power to to start making a new choice and you making a new choice can actually lead to you having disconfirming experiences which are experiences that go against your beliefs that can actually start to dissolve them so i want to give you an example of what that looks like for me if i was interested in somebody romantically or just like them or had a crush on them and say we were texting everything was good and maybe even we'd hung out like the whole week and everything looked great but one day they stopped texting or had been more time than usual or they didn't answer my call. A panic would set in because I put a meaning on that situation, oh no. It must be, it's probably because I did something. I have a perceptual bias of abandonment. So any sort of tiny little warning sign, and again, I'm placing the meaning that it's a warning sign because they're gonna abandon me. Probably because I'm not good enough. If I was more, then they would want to stay. Then they'd be more interested. And eventually, oh, I'm not valuable for who I am. It's what I do. So all of these things would kick in because in that moment, I put the label and the meaning that the reason that they weren't contacting me was because of me. However, now what it looks like if somebody's not contacting me or it's been a little bit, for one, my relationship, romantic relationship dynamic has completely changed. I don't assume that if somebody's not talking to me or if somebody is distant, that it's about me. So if something happens, I think, wow, I'm not sure what's going on. I'm not, maybe they're busy at work. Maybe they something came up. Maybe they're talking to a friend or family. Because because I know I'm worthy. Why do I know that I'm worthy? Because I am. I am here. I am on this earth. You are worthy simply by your existence. It is not ever what you do, did or didn't do. It is something that you can never lose. It has always been inherent in you and in me. And I know that I'm valuable. I know that what I have to offer and who I am as a person, I'm enjoyable to be around because I own that. And so before, when I thought, oh no, everything's about me, I put that meaning. And there's a moment, and this is the power of neuroplasticity. A situation will happen, and there's a small moment, a gap, and you have a chance to make a new choice. Meaning, are you gonna make the old one? and repeat the circumstances. So even if something happens and this comes up and you try to affirm I'm good enough, I'm good enough, I'm good enough, well, you're still interpreting it through the old system. So even though you're trying to put effort and energy into it, 
you're actually already on that path of putting the meaning that it's about you. So you're trying to kind of affirm or visualize over it. This person's distant. Okay. I'm starting to feel anxious. I'm starting to feel scared. I'm starting to feel unsafe that they're going to leave me. Okay. I need to take that energy that's going to be focused on them and I need to actually take it in. This could be about money. This could be about jobs, careers, anything. There's going to be a moment, a gap. The more you can mind the gap, you're going to be shifting to a new state of being. The thoughts and feelings of this person versus the thoughts and feelings of this person are dramatically different. And if we look at Neville Goddard, how to change your circumstances is through your consciousness level. Thoughts and feelings, electromagnetic signature, the vision you're able to see the world through. This right here gives you access to seeing new opportunities that align with this. This will give you opportunities that with situations that align with this. Basically, these two are created by your belief system. And this is a filtration system and this is a filtration system. The more you choose in that moment, the more you get to own your power. The second thing you can do is start to cultivate a relationship with your ideal self. Don't just think of it, start to become it. And this is going to take practice because you actually need to feel it and start essentially practicing that in your body. That's why Neville Goddard said, the feeling is the secret. Living it in your body before you experience it in your outside world is pivotal. Now, this is where I see a lot of people make a big mistake. You, in your ideal self, you're going to experience abundance. Uh, maybe it's about a secure relationship. There's joy, there's happiness, maybe job opportunities. The person you'll need to be, the belief system you'll need to have, the assumptions you'll need to have that you're whole and complete. And that will manifest a secure, loving relationship that you're worthy or valuable. That's going to help you manifest or get a reflection of that in your outside world. Uh, maybe that you're, you have the ability and that you can trust yourself. Uh, that's going to bring a lot of peace, maybe even again, job opportunities and that you're talented. You had something to offer that goes along with all of it. So the, the issue that I see people making and the part of this where you could continue, you could be putting a lot of work in and keep seeing the circumstances that you don't want to have anymore is because your visualizations, your affirmations are all about the outcome. This, these experiences in life are as a result. They are second. The first thing that needs to happen is this and that goes and it manifests or expresses as these things in their tangible world, your circumstances. But this has to happen. Step one, become this person. Therefore, step two is experience these things. If you're in the old state, if you feel unworthy, if you feel not lovable, and you're trying to affirm or visualize these experiences to mask or extinguish how you're currently feeling, that doesn't work because you're visualizing for what will happen and not who you'll need to be. You will always get an expression of who you are being. So one big part that I really would encourage you to do is start to see when you're visualizing, is it the person or is it the experience? Now you could be, you know, visualizing up here. That's okay. Only you know the answer here of what you're doing. But if your attention and your time is not going to who you are, if it's attached to what you'll get, it, you're missing who you'll be. And it's kind of like you're ghosting that future version of you so that you can get the experience, but never really investing the time. That'd be like, you want to go meet this executive because of the opportunity that they will give you. You don't really go and get to know them and build a relationship and then see what they want to offer you. You go in and you're like, Oh, tell me the thing. And you're kind of trying to use them to get to the experience that as that executive, whoever that person would be, that doesn't feel good. It feels like you're being used. So in that, again, there's no wrong in that. However, it's not going to get you the experiences you're wanting. So are you cultivating a relationship with the person you need to be, or are you trying to manifest and get the things you want that person to bring you? Just start to ask yourself this because what you might notice is that you're able to put more energy here and that's going to help you start to cultivate that new state of being, making it easier to shift in this. And guess what? The end product is what you're really wanting and I want for you. However, how to get there is just a little bit different than what you're doing now. I'm really excited to show you this third thing that you can start to do because I've actually never talked about it on any videos. I've talked about the setup. But the effect of what's happening, I think, can really shift what you're experiencing right now. So first part of this is going to be to understand when you were a child, you were vulnerable. You depended on some sort of caretaker 
to basically keep you alive. Your physical safety depended on this. So basically you related to your safety and how you could be in the world through this person. You needed to also be accepted. So you had to adopt and adapt. This could have meant you leaving your needs, you leaving yourself to connect or to stay safe. Even if this person was mean or they were abusive to some degree, it doesn't matter because you will still basically say this person knows best because if they don't know best and they can't take care of my physical survival and safety, I'm screwed. I can't do it alone. So you basically go chips in, all in. So you put them on a pedestal because they know better. Again, so you're dependent on them. You put them on the pedestal. How they treated you, now this could be what they actually said or what you perceived your value of that you're not worthy. Oh, it's what I do. Even if it's a loving parent, they want you to go out and, you know, do good in the world because they want you to just be safe and have a good life. But you perceived, oh, okay, if I don't get those really good grades, if I don't get first place, then I, they won't love me. Uh, maybe they actually told you that you're not valuable because of their own shit and they were taking it out or projecting it out on you. We're not blaming. What we're trying to do is get you to see that situation clearly. So whatever happened growing up, if you had a really critical parent, you could feel guilty that you're always doing it wrong. You could feel ashamed that how you do it is wrong and you are bad because nothing you do is right. That parent could have done it from a very toxic place, traumatic place, or it could have been from a place of love. What matters is your perception of who you needed to be to be accepted, okay? So that's step one, to understand this, because this can also help you let go of those old limiting beliefs, because this basically was safe. Whatever's in your box of self-image or self-concept, that's how you stayed safe. So those were the leftover beliefs. The beliefs you'll need to have to align with whatever's over here were not safe. So you basically limiting beliefs are essentially leftover beliefs. These are the beliefs I can have and still be okay in this environment. You no longer in that environment, so you can let them go. But the big thing here is because this person had authority over you, because they were taking care of you, you could be still outsourcing your inner authority. Meaning that maybe it's still your caregiver, maybe it's your parents or whoever took care of you growing up. Maybe this is a spouse, maybe this is a partner, maybe this is a boss, maybe these are friends. You have to check in, get permission or their specific validation in order to move on. So if you're trying to make changes, if you're trying to feel worthy, you check in with them and if they're in a different state, if they're working through their own shit and you're like, oh gosh, they're not, they're not getting it, they're not saying it, I must not be doing it enough because you're relating to your safety just like the early on situation that if they give you approval then you're safe but what you got to do is you got to take back realize this dynamic and take it back have the sovereignty over yourself because we need you the world I'm going to speak on behalf of the world we need you to take that inner authority back so that you can move in the world unique to yourself share with us your talents your unique vision your unique perspective because guess what if you're explaining something to somebody and you kind of get a blank face it doesn't mean that it's not a great idea every great invention or idea actually probably sounded crazy at the time because people had no context they had no understanding of what it is can you imagine the wright brothers telling people that they're going to fly these really heavy materials are going to make them fly be like you're going to die right that they didn't let that limit them and there's so many other things that if you wait for somebody else to give you the authority, you'll be waiting forever. And that ability to create change and innovation is in, the seeds are in you. So when you take back your inner authority, you take back your power and you can start to make changes and change your state of being that you're not in those lower level vibrations. You are capable, you are able. And that also is how you can move the uh, anchors of whatever's keeping you from this because whatever it is that you want, whatever desire, that is your true self. Anything blocking it is an opinion, a judgment, most likely from somebody else or a perception that you had in the world of how you were supposed to could or couldn't move. Specifically as of when you shared your voice, if that was cast down or negatively seen. So that created a way you saw the world. So now you gotta realize, oh, it's actually safe for me to see it this way now and be my true self. That's how I stay safe now. The more you do that, 
and you claim that inner authority, the more you can freely move towards the life you really want to build. If you need a little bit more support on understanding how to let go of those limiting beliefs, this next video right here is going to give you all the info to do that. Thank you so much for watching. I love y'all. If you like this video, click like. If you haven't done so already, join this community and I will see you on the next one.